Hey kids and parents, happy Easter and welcome to Church at Home. My name is Brandy and I'm from the Littest Campus and I am so glad that you are able to make it for week five of our Church at Home experience. I hope that you and your families are able to celebrate our risen Savior, Jesus, today. So tell me, what is your favorite Easter activity you all have done or will be doing today? That's awesome. Well, before we celebrate, let's sit together, worship, and learn the whole reason why we can celebrate today. So I have a question for you guys. Who can you share the story of Easter with? Guys, God didn't have to send Jesus, but that is just how much that God loves you. Jesus is alive so our sins could be forgiven. And now that we are forgiven, we can have a relationship with God and one day be with God in heaven. This is the reason we celebrate Easter. Remember, Jesus beat death for everyone in the whole world, and we should share that with everyone, that Jesus is alive. This week, we are celebrating a very big day, and y'all are probably wondering why I'm holding this in my hand. So, we need to have a very big drum roll to announce our big idea. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Our big idea is that Jesus is alive. Let's pretend that you are the biggest game cheering on your team, like the Philadelphia Eagles. We won and want everyone to know, so let's cheer together. Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! Great job, warehouse friends. I just love when we get to celebrate Jesus, and another way we can do that is through worship. So everyone, let's stand to our feet, get ready to praise and thank God for everything, and today, especially for Jesus. And you guys may notice, that we're gonna start a new warehouse song today. Some of you may have done it already in your lessons and with your teachers, but this is a brand new one for some people, so get ready to learn this new song. Hey everybody, my name is Kenneth, and I have a couple of our Kids on the Move dancers, Chelsea and Sally with me, and we're gonna go over the motions to Jesus is Alive right now. It's a super easy song, let's get right into it. The first part is the intro, and you just spin. That's all you do, it goes like this. Whoa. Whoa, okay, and that's it for the intro. And then we're gonna get right into the verse. It goes like this. We got a brand new anthem. We got a brand new sound. So get everybody talking, yeah. Okay, the next part, you're gonna play some drums and you're gonna sway from side to side just like this. We won't stop and we won't wait. We'll stand and sing our Savior's name, our Savior's name. Okay, and then we're going to get right into the chorus. It goes like this. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive right now. Whoa. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive right now. Okay, then you do the spinning part again, and you're right into the second verse. You put your fist in the air like this. Death couldn't beat him, nothing could hold him down. Our God conquered the grave, so come on now, make it loud. Everybody shout it out, Jesus is alive right now. Throw a big fist on that right now. Okay, and then we're back into the chorus, and then we get to the bridge. The bridge is super easy, it goes like this. We won't stop, we won't wait. We'll stand and sing the Savior's name. We won't stop, we won't wait. We'll stand and sing the Savior's name. And then you clap, okay. The next part of the song is one of the best parts. It's the bridge, it's a callback part. And what I do is I have the dancers get down real low and all the kids, and the leader's gonna scream out, Jesus is alive right now. The kids are gonna shout it out and repeat. And when they do, the dancers jump up and shout it out with them. So it goes like this. Jesus is alive right now, and you jump up, Jesus is alive right now. Back down. Jesus is alive right now. Get up. Jesus is alive right now. Again. Jesus is alive right now. Jump up. Jesus is alive right now. The last time, we're going to come up slowly. Jesus is alive right now. Jesus is alive right now. Whoa. Then you get right back into the chorus. You do two choruses. You do the outro where you spin to the right and spin to the left, and then you're done with the song. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it all together, all those motions, and we're gonna show you how it goes. It goes like this.
got a brand new sound So get everybody talking, yeah Couldn't beat him, nothing could hold him down. Our God conquered the grave, so come on now, make it loud. Everybody shout it out, Jesus is alive right now. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive right now. Whoa, sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive right now. Jesus is alive right now. Say, Jesus is alive right now. Jesus is alive right now. You shout it out. Jesus is alive right now. 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 Whoa! Sing it out, sing it out. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. 
So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Wow, what a cool story. I'm Michelle from our Columbia campus, and I want to talk to you about our story today. Today's story of Jesus' death and resurrection is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, and it's all about Jesus' death and his resurrection. You just watched a cool video about it, but let's look at a couple of parts of that story together. Jesus was treated so badly. The people were so angry with him that they arrested him and put him on the cross. It was terrible. All of Jesus' friends were so sad because they loved Jesus and thought they'd never see Jesus again. But what happened three days later? Do you know? This is why we celebrate Easter. We celebrate Easter because Jesus is alive. Jesus beat death. Our next Bible verses are John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Right here in your Bible. Listen to this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 
Here's some questions to talk about as a family. If God loves the world, does that mean God loves everyone? How does it feel knowing God loves you so much that he sent Jesus, his one and only son, to save you? Jesus beat death so we could all live the good life. The mistakes that we make that would normally count against us like they do in a video game or a sport are all forgiven. God didn't have to send Jesus, but that is how much God loves you. Jesus beat death so our sins could be forgiven. And now that we're forgiven, we can have a relationship with God and one day be with God in heaven. Now that we all know the real story why we celebrate Easter, who can you share the story of Easter with? Remember, Jesus beat death for everyone in the whole world. We should share the story of Easter for everyone. Let's take a moment to thank God for sending us Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for sending him to us on earth so that we could have a relationship with you. Thank you for his death. Thank you for his resurrection. And thank you for your love. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm Bobby and I grew up on, on my family's farm. I moved to the big city, let adventure take me far. It's Hobbies with Bobby, Bobby, yeah! This is Hobbies with Bobby. Oh, hi there. Good to see you again. Welcome to my house in the city. I just got back from dance rehearsal. Whew, we've been practicing for a huge dance competition, but I don't think we're gonna win. Oh, for starters, the last three years in a row, we have lost to the team from Granite Hills. They wear all black and they're super, super intimidating. Then this week, our best dancer, Jessica, sprained her ankle really bad. It doesn't look like she's even gonna be able to dance with us in the final competition. I feel super sad about it. One of the things I learned when I was at church, like you are right now, is that I can go to the Bible no matter how I'm feeling. Let's see if there's a story that can teach us something today. It's Bible time, time for the Bible, yeah! yeah. It's Bible time with Bobby. This story is from the book of Matthew. Last week, we learned about how Jesus trusted God, even though that meant he'd be killed by the people who didn't think he was the son of God. But Jesus trusted God and made the sacrifice that showed the whole world how much he loved us. This story this week picks up after Jesus was killed by the rulers and buried in the tomb. On the third day, friends of Jesus who were women went to the tomb to take care of his dead body. But when they got there, his dead body was gone. There was an earthquake. Then an angel came down and spoke to them. Matthew 28, five through six says, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Wow, they looked in and Jesus was gone. So they ran and told more of Jesus' followers that Jesus had beat death. Jesus had come back from the dead. That must have been so encouraging for Jesus' friends and disciples. Even when they thought there was no chance for success, that they for sure had lost, that is when God pulled out the victory. Well, now I'm off to our dance competition. I'm going to remember that lesson from last week, that if Jesus can trust God, then so can I. And all we can do is try our best, even if we don't have our best dancer, Jessica. Wish me luck. Look at this, we did it. Jessica's ankle healed up and the doctor said she could dance in the competition. She was amazing and our team had a lot of fun dancing together. Even when no one else thought we can win, we were able to do the improbable. And afterwards, we met our rivals, the team from Granite Hills, and they weren't that bad after all. I guess this is a lot like the Bible story. Jesus beat death which even his closest friends didn't think he could do. 
The biggest win that ever was won is in Jesus Christ. Jesus beat death to give everyone life. I'm so glad you could be with me this week. Next week, come hang out and we can try another hobby together. See you soon. This is Hobbies with Bobby. Amen, amen. Thanks, Michelle, for such a great lesson about Jesus, explaining Easter and helping us to understand why this day is such a big deal for us. And I hope that what you've learned today, boys and girls, about Jesus doesn't stay with you in your living room, basement, or wherever you are right now. I hope that each of you really think about the question that has been asked several times in this lesson. And that question is, who can you share the story of Easter with? Be brave, step out in faith, and share with one person that the story of, about the story of Easter. I even double dog dare you to ask someone who you normally don't see in church. Maybe that means messaging a friend, FaceTiming a family member, whoever it is. And we are praying that God gives you nothing but peace and confidence as you share the good news of Jesus with them. Now wait, don't exit out yet. You aren't finished with having church. Parents, make sure to download and print out the warehouse activity and discussion guide to continue the conversation from today's lesson with your child. And don't forget to make sure you take photos, videos, post them to social media and tag our Victory Kids Facebook page. We love keeping up with how everyone is having fun and continuing to have church right in their own home. Until next time, we hope that you enjoy celebrating Easter with your family and we can't wait to see you soon. Bye friends.